Yeah, it is dangerous. Not every one of them is trying to kill you, but you know, there are some that they're just really tough to ride or kind of have that nature that they just don't want you there a lot. So I've had nasty wrecks, you know, and things get hung up and, and then you have to be able to like, take that, throw it away and get on another one. I rode bulls for a very short period of time and I got hurt real bad when I was in high school, my freshman year, I got stepped on and on my face and I've got two plates and eight screws in my face. Broke my cheekbone and then broke my jaw in two places and and unfortunately it happened on Mother's Day. And so, <laughs> yeah, so it definitely wasn't good. And I decided I wasn't very good at bull riding so I, I switched to bucking horses about a year later. And uh, mom didn't like that right away but uh, started riding bucking horses and found I was a little better at it. Welcome to the Tucson Rodeo. How are you feeling out there today? Make a little noise. Let me know you're alive out there, will you? Oh, it's awesome. Just one of the great rodeos of this spring kind of winter run. Great crowd. The weather's beautiful. How about we start them off with the banner of our United States Army? Thank everybody coming out for the rodeo just for, for that. And then be able to thank people for their service it really means a lot. How about the banner, the red and gold flag of our United States Marine Corps? You know, my mother and father were strict, but not overly bearing, and it was always about having fun, you know, and making sure that everybody was happy. We were always together, hunting and fishing and camping, and it was just a loving family in Carson City. It's a great place to grow up. My dad rode when he was younger. I had done a couple pro rodeos here and there, and then, shoot, I was three years old, I started doing a rodeo, roping the dummy head on the uh, bale of hay, and then worked my way up from there. I still wear his spurs that he rode with. Now let's go to Cody Kaiser. All the single girls in the grandstands go, woohoo! He's 6'2", tall, dark, handsome, good looking, rich, and yes, girls, he is single. Okay, there you go. Show him what you got. Holy cow, he owned him, he owned him. Yeah, buddy, yeah, buddy. <laughs> he is feeling good and he's got every right to. We'll show you Something that I've always wanted to do. Even when I was a kid, I wanted to be a stunt man. I mean, they have, they have a special guy that just crashes cars and jumps off buildings. It's like, I want to do that. He said, hey, I might have a job for you. I said, oh yeah, and what's that? He said, I need a bareback rider that meets this description that can be here on these dates and wants to do it. And I said, hey, I'm your man. Doesn't matter what it is, I'll do it. I got the call to double Bradley Cooper as Chris Kyle in American Sniper and be his stuntman for the rodeo scene at the beginning of the movie. And when I found out it was Bradley Cooper and Clint Eastwood, I was kind of blown away. You know, I wasn't sure if I'd meet them or get to know them or anything and and I was lucky enough to get to meet both of them and just two of the nicest guys I mean both walked up and shook my hand and introduced themselves like I didn't know who they were that was just by far one of the coolest experiences I've ever had being able to not only double Bradley Cooper but as Chris Kyle in this American hero movie about a Navy SEAL that that really made a difference I think that was honoring him, and I think it was honoring a lot of servicemen and women as well. She belongs to us. And to be a part of that is a huge honor, huge honor. If you're proud of her, give her the welcome she deserves, old glory. They say behind the bucket shoots, there are no atheists. We all need a little help once in a while. So in your own words and in your own way, please join me whether it be working out, staying in shape, riding the spur board, or getting on horses. You know, not a day goes by that I'm sitting around doing nothing. I told you this girl's 
Like, I'm not any kind of natural talent. Like, it's taken me a lot of work, and I'm still not great at it all the time, you know? Like, it's just something that I've had to really work on. You can do it all. You gotta be healthy. In the world that, that rodeo is now, you have to be a, a professional athlete. I mean, you can't be smoking cigarettes or chewing tobacco all the time and, and be able to do this. Within five years, about 50% or a little less of those people that are diagnosed with oral cancer, in about five years, they're gone. They've passed on. Be smart, don't start. We got it on my shirt, my vest. You don't have to smoke or chew in order to be a cowboy or be cool, you know, or be successful. I, uh, I like to be able to show what you can do without that. Rodeo is very much of an old school traditional thing and nobody wants to change that. So I'm not here to change anybody's opinion. I'm not trying to tell people how to live their life. But my whole thing with roll cancer is getting to the younger generation. And that really stubborn age of about 12, 13 to 18, you know. I know when I was a kid, just having somebody come up to me and give me the time of day and shake my hand, give me a high five, something as simple as that, I know it just like blew my mind, right? I've got guys that I ride with that smoke and chew and, and they'll have their kids back there and I'm like, hey, you know, can I give your kids a bandana or something? They're like, oh yeah, sure. And just to mess with me, they'll ask, they're like, hey, you got some chew on you or something? They know I don't chew and I can handle that, it's not a big deal. It doesn't matter how good of an actor you are, you're gonna ride fucking horses if you're gonna win money in the rodeo business. And I try to picture my ride going perfect. Picturing what I'm gonna do and what the horse is gonna do, and it's a dance, and we're gonna do the dance, and it's gonna be great. We'll be the champions of the rodeo. The winners of our rodeo get the victory lap today. Now let's go to Cody Kaiser. Here's the stunt man from Carson City, Nevada. He was the stunt doctor. That horse just doesn't like anybody being on him in the shoe. You're not trying to hurt anybody. That's just the way he is. Just first jump out of the chute, just all there. I got behind right away. I got out on the end of my arm and just jerked down. It happened so fast, I can't even tell you. I just got slammed into the ground, and but it's all right. not many horses like that out there. And even Benny Butler said that to me, the guy that owns a horse. I mean, a world-class cowboy, stock contractor. It, we had a fight today and the horse won a fight. But that's all right, you know, I made it back in third. Made a little money here, so that was unreal. You know, I couldn't be happier with that. I'm not just in anything for the money. You know, obviously I'm doing these things because I love what I do and, and uh, I want to crash cars and ride bucking horses and jump off buildings. He owned him, he owned him. Yeah, buddy, yeah, buddy. <laughs>